Hello, my name is Andreas Deja. I've been a Disney animator for almost 25 years. One of the things I love to do here at the studio is come to the Animation Research Library, where all the artwork for the Disney animated features is stored. Here I can see the work of the masters who worked on the classic animated films, including, of course, Bambi. I'd like you to join me now on a tour of the library and take a look at the incredible artwork that still exists from the original production. I have Doug with me here today, uh, who is a researcher, and it's very important to have some help around here because you need somebody to show you where everything is. Uh -huh. So Doug, tell me, I'm looking for some sort of hidden treasures from Bambi. Do you know if you guys have any artwork that might not have been used in the actual movie? Sure, let's take a look at a couple of these. Here are the story sketches. So these are actual sketches that were not used for the final film. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were trying to do a lot of work with, uh, with a chipmunk and a squirrel, and this is one of the gags that they were working on here. Uh -huh. and so this is the owl listening to them, right? Mm -hmm. There's something going on down here. And the owl flies down to find out what the racket is all about and <laughs> as the owl lands. And it looks like it upsets their balance a bit and they're, they're, would, they're holding. It would have to. They're barely hanging on now to the owl's tail over here. And this seems to be a, a particular artist's idea because it says Ralph Wright's idea. So he, he obviously felt kind of proud of this gag. <laughs> <laughs> then the branch gives and cracks. Everybody's gone, and the camera picks them up down in the snow again. Guilty expressions here on those two. You know. well, it looks like they had an audience. Which happened to be Bambi and the rabbits. So I would say that they probably cut this because in developing the squirrel and the chipmunk, you know, you probably focus on too many characters. And the main story really is about Bambi, Thumper, and the skunk. You might find this interesting, Andreas. The bees, which we don't see in the final version of the film. I don't recall any bees in the movie, but I do remember they were working on a sequence between Bambi and a bee, where one of the bees was flying to Bambi's ear and ended up in Bambi's stomach. So these might be those bees, actually. But here they're just zipping through and flying along and don't look too friendly, actually. I just can't believe how rendered these are. These would have taken so much time to capture the whole mood, I guess, of the sequence. Another story element that didn't make the final version of the film. The grasshoppers. And then he even talks to Bambi. He says, you up there, you almost stepped on me. And then he's actually yelling at Thumper, too. So he must have been part of the sequence as well. And I can't believe how close Thumper here looks like he does in the final film. He's not even called Thumper. I think he's called Bobo. Bobo? Yeah. OK, Bobo the rabbit. So when I come to the Animation Research Library to do my research, this is how it works. I come into this reading room, and then people like Vivian, who is a researcher over here, will bring me the artwork to study. So what you got, Vivian? I've got some story sketches and visual development. So this packet is about the forest, mm -hmm. and it has a lot of watercolor and pastel pieces, some of which are of Taiwan. And look, look how small they are. He can set a mood an atmosphere very, very quickly. You know, he doesn't have to do a big painting. And these are also from the sequence that shows the forest after the fire. You can still see some glow and some ashes. And this kind of artwork was done to inspire the background painters. They took the color use from work like this and then made these into big paintings. Yeah. Run over here. So this is a story sketch. And it's really unusual uh, because when you look at this peculiar shadow over here, this is supposed to be man. I mean, mm -hmm. you think of Bambi, they only talk about man, then you never really see a human figure. That's right. So at one point, they were actually thinking about showing man, like in the story sketch over here. So here we are having several versions of the character of Bambi and his mother. And you can see what the animators and the character designers go through, striving to achieve a final style. And they usually start out with realism. Yeah. You know, when you look at this drawing over here, that looks like a rendering of a real deer. There's no caricature there. And the other one that looks real, I think, is this one. Even though it's a line drawing, it kind of has sort of the realism of a real deer. And the same one over here. We're trying to find the pattern for Bambi's spots, and something like this would be way too complicated. This one even still has too much detail. It's a little simpler than some of these, but all these different color separations would also be very difficult to animate. And uh, 
They're still not humanized yet. They don't have the human emotions. But these Mark Davis sketches then gave sort of the human element to it by putting human expressions onto the animal face. You can see that these, these eyes had, had gotten larger than real deer eyes. And the forehead is very big, the eyelashes. Those are all elements that you find in children. And then the stuff comes to life, and then you can say, well, these drawings could talk. So here we are looking at some background art, and this is Anne, who's going to show us some original background from the movie Bambi. Andreas, so, we've picked out a few backgrounds for you. Oh, my, look at this one. What really amazes me about this one is how long it is. It would have to be a camera move. So in other words, the camera, if it would start over here, would then move all the way across here, and you might have some birds or squirrels moving through. The thing about Bambi is that the background art is very unique. There's so much left out. It's very impressionistic. And then you have these wonderful accents right here where you have a spot of light and you can see detailed bark. And I would think that we would probably have a character ending up at this spot. So these two backgrounds here are from the fire sequence. You can see that this is all painted in red tones and it's kept again so simple. So what you would have in the final film is the simplicity of this background and then the animation of the flames going across here, flickering away. It almost looks Chinese because the Tyrus Wong brought that influence to this movie. So Anne is going to show us some backgrounds that are actually painted on glass. Yes. And look at these beautiful pieces of art. And I believe, again, this is from the opening shot where we truck through the forest and we pass by this little lake. And the reason why there are holes in here, and this is not painted because th this is part of a multiplane setup. In other words, there was another layer probably behind this that showed an even deeper, lower background. Look at those colors. Beautiful. This must be springtime. I think this is the beginning of the spring sequence. And here again, that hole over here represents the water coming through because that would be on a different level. Some birds would fly through. That's why this is so long, because it's a pan background. But look at these impressionistic trees. I mean, just blotches of paint. And yet it all works. And we have Fox over here, who said earlier on he found something very unique. Hello, Andres. How are you? Good. How are you? All righty. This is actual Bambi animation that's out of picture. Of the so character that it means Bambi. that this scene is not in the movie. Correct. This was uh, cut. Correct. All right, let's take a peek. Thank you. And I'm going to put these drawings onto this old peg bar. And then I can flip them back and forth, and we can see some movement. As I'm flipping it and going back and forth, you can see that Bambi is sort of startled. He's looking at something here, and something startled him, and he moves backward. And there are so many subtleties happening here. You can see how. As his head is going up, his ears are going down, and we call that counter-movement. For a scene such as this, you would really have to do 24 drawings for each second. And you can see how much detail is involved. Even the spots that are drawn on Bambi have this perspective change. You can see this right away as they're going back behind him and then surfacing again on his, on his rear. There's so much attention to detail. There's probably more detail in Bambi, I would say, than in any other Disney film. Bambi is really more than a movie. It's a work of art. And the more you know about it, the more you will enjoy it.